You're going to get a suit. That's copyright infringement. Don't do that. Yeah, well, uh, Vanilla Ice did it and Pick up he note. won. He did not win. I thought he did win. Vanilla Ice did not win that did you? Did you ever see the interview where he goes, that version is, our version is, yeah, the pickup note. Don't sue us. I was just verbalizing. This is the most British band in history. Why do you hate British people? Fuck you, dude. I heard that. <laughs> it doesn't even matter who the second most British band in history might be because it's not even close. Rolling like Stones? Queen is absolutely... No, fuck no, they're not the most British band in history. They're mm. nowhere near. The mm. Rolling Stones aren't even in the top five most mm. British bands in history. No shit. Pulp is probably number two. I thought you were going to say Queen is one, two, three, four, and five, and then whoever else is... Because Queen is actually... Uh, sounds like every other band. <laughs> Queen sounds like ten bands in one. Right, yeah, sure. Maybe. Queen only happens in England. The Beatles could have been from anywhere outside of America and served the exact same function that they served as long as they had accents from anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, Queen only exists as a result of British culture. You do not get Queen without English culture. In what way? Uh, let's put it this way. If new evidence came to light that Queen was a Monty Python sketch that's just been running this whole time, yeah. I would believe it. Yeah. It's fair. It would not take very much to convince me. It's the longest running joke. I mean, if you listen, I think that they're even fucking with people sometimes. If you listen to the song Sheer Heart Attack, tell me that band's not trying to make you stop listening to the song. There's some weird, like, whistly sound in it. It's like it's trying to get you to stop listening Is to the song. Is that song on one of the greatest hits records? I don't know. Is that all you've heard? No, I'm thinking that's probably a majority of people. That's all they've heard. Haven't heard that song. Yeah, so the they probably hits. don't even know that songs exist. We should have made a list of all the songs that people should listen to to truly experience Queen. Here's the B-sides. Oh, wait, that's everything. Not, <laughs> not in the Greatest Hits record. They could start with the song, I'm in love with my car, because the title of that song is not false advertising. <laughs> it's a song about a guy who is in love with his car. Yeah. Wow, that's deep if you really think about it. British people, man. <laughs> the, really, the only question here is how big a fan of British culture you are. Because it turns out, I think a lot of it's fucking annoying. And yeah, I yeah. realized that while getting ready to do this episode. Everyone across the pond right now from us is just like, fuck you, dude. They were already like that. Or whatever. I don't know. What are the accents they have? Hey, uh, Mark, do you know who the president of America is right now? Donald Trump. Yeah, it doesn't fucking matter what <laughs> I say. true. Everyone's going to think I'm a fucking asshole. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're automatically assholes. Most of Queen's hits, this is something that you were touching on, most of Queen's hits do not sound like they were made by the same band. No. Most of the songs that people associate with Queen don't sound like any of the other Queen songs. If they were actually to buy the records, not the greatest hit records, but actually buy the records and listen to them all the way through, I don't think people would like Queen. Fuck no, man. Yeah, they would definitely be bummed after getting through the songs that they know. They don't make good albums. You know 10 Queen songs. I promise you know 10. Yeah. Because if you knew more than that, you, would you wouldn't be, be mad at us right now. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be sitting here going, I can't believe these guys are saying this. Oh, and we haven't said it yet, but Queen sucks. Yeah, Queen that's sucks. Like a, that's like a no-brainer. Yeah. Wait, the Queen? <laughs> I don't like the royal family either. Wow. We can totally fucking Holy go there. shit. For people who don't know. We're going to get banned. We're going to get banned from Europe. I probably can't get a passport anyway, dude. <laughs> that's right. Your favorite band sucks <laughs> going down the road. <laughs> Only Mark is coming. I've honestly been thinking about trying to start a feud with the entire nation of Canada yeah. through this podcast because they're definitely never letting me back in that country. Yeah. Fuck you, Canada. You if you're Canadian, go fuck yourself. You know what sucks is we can never do an episode of Nickelback because they're not that bad. That's also true. And they're Canadian, so yeah. we'd have to find an actual shitty Canadian band. You don't even band. fucking appreciate your best band, Nickelback? Yeah, Canadian shit on Nickelback. That's bullshit. Anyways, where's the gratitude? They put you on the map. I hope by the time that this podcast goes on the road, because that's what all podcasts do, they will have some sort of holographic technology, so you can we be can, at, yeah. you can be at home, and I can be in Europe somewhere getting or stoned awesome. or some shit. We should, we're going to do that in America <laughs> too. How do we get to Canada? We were just talking before they were talking. Oh about no, we're recording this right after the fucking royal wedding happened. I you know, have, like yeah. shit on the royal yeah. wedding. Yeah. Why does anyone care about the royal wedding? I thought we literally fought a war in order to not have to care about shit like this. Yeah, it's really weird. Do they play queen songs at the royal wedding? I gotta think so. Like Fat Bottom Girls or something? Definitely Fat Bottom. I girls. hope so. I hope that happened. You're gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get another misogynist <laughs> I, email. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> What is the common thread running through this band's music? Because I'm not hearing it. I would love for someone to point out to me what is the common thread running through all of Queen's music. I think the truth is, is Queen, you don't know. Are they trying to be an operatic 
band or Sometimes. a rock band Sometimes. or a rockabilly band Sometimes. or a ska band Sometimes. or something. I don't know. What are they trying to be? Sometimes. They don't actually can't pick a genre and stick to it. They're just all over the map. Every Queen song just sounds like some shit they think they can get crowds of people to yell along with. Mm -hmm. This is just pure pandering. Sing along, across sing the along, fucking sing board. along, sing along. And I mean big crowds, too, because could you imagine this band playing in a rock club? Like, what if you just walked into a 500-cap room and Queen was playing? You'd be bummed. It'd be fucking weird, right? Yeah. Just that kind of music? Yeah. only large venues. What the fuck? It would be really fucking pathetic sure. to try to get 500 people to clap along to fucking We Will Rock You. Go fuck yourselves. Well, it's terrible. The part of the thing of seeing Queen, too, live is the recordings, it's like 5,000 layered vocals and everything, so I don't even know how how that works live certainly wouldn't work in a small club. The only reason to like Queen is if you like being in big crowds of people who are all yelling the same shit as you, like at Nazi rallies. Whoa. We're the champions, dude. No time for losers. <laughs> no time for losers. We boom, 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 shh, we boom, will, shh, we burn the will books, bomb burn the you. Books. Yeah. All right. Whatever anyone likes about Queen was already done by a different band and done better. I mean, there's so many. What are you going to choose? You're going to Elvis for rock, That's like, the for thing. rock and roll? Because they wrote shit, literally like an Elvis cover song practically. This shit is so derivative that I truly do not know where to start here. Yeah. Where do you start with calling it out? They took the kitchen sink approach here. If we rip off everyone at mm -hmm. the same time, no one's going to be able to tell who we're ripping off and it'll just sound like something new. I do wonder... Because now we look back at Queen, but what did people experience then? Because there, there were was people, like, oh, Queen put out a new song. I have no idea what to expect. Is it going to be a rock and roll song? Is it going to be an opera song? Is it What's it going to be? There were definitely people who recognized this as derivative at the time. How do you actually like a band that can't actually pick a freaking genre and <laughs> stick to it? For sure. I think you could sum up Queen as Queen is what would happen if Elton John was in the band. Yes, <laughs> that would be Queen. That's quite the thing to think about. You can hear a lot of other things at various points. Thin Lizzy, I hear a lot of Thin Lizzy in Queen, Todd Rundgren, Roxy Music. They're ripping off Roxy Music hard in a lot of places. And Gary Glitter. Dude, Gary Glitter, I don't know. I, don't, I think that people don't know who Gary Glitter actually is. I don't mm -hmm. think they put the name to the music. If you've ever been to a fucking sporting event, you've heard Gary Glitter. Da -na 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 -na. Hey, da -na 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 -na. That's fucking Gary Glitter. And We Will Rock You is just a fucking ripoff Obviously. of Gary Glitter. It's yeah. straight lifted. We Will Rock You is, if you listen to that song and then we are the champions which is a separate song to say, is but it, it always is played. it a separate well, song I don't know if people know that yeah. <laughs> because it's so they're always played together always even on the fucking radio they're played together always but they're two separate tracks play one or the other it's okay the other thing that I think people don't realize you know after the fact placing this shit on a timeline is this came after all of that boner rock stuff like Deep Purple and Slade Queen is jacking their guitar sound just straight from the fucking source yeah but no, they marry opera together with it dude even in 19 how do you not appreciate that <laughs> well listen to the who episode of this podcast <laughs> if you want to hear how i don't appreciate any musicians trying to gentrify rock and roll by elevating it to the status of opera um in 1974 a magazine called record mirror called queen quote the dregs of glam rock end quote the dregs of the glam dregs rock? yes mm. Accurate. Yeah, that's very accurate. It's actually a great quote. Brian May has a PhD in astrophysics. Fucking nerd. I fucking hate nerds, Mark. So what you basically, it'd be like if Elon Musk started a band nowadays and people thought God, it was good. I wish Elon Musk would start a band. Yeah, with Bill Gates or something. Oh, uh, no, you, you lost me there. Or, okay, Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon and Musk. Grimes. And Grimes. He's fucking uh, dating Grimes. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, Elon Musk yeah. and Grimes should start a band like Trent Reznor did with his girlfriend, uh, whatever that was called. Okay, okay, wait. Elon Musk. Grimes. Grimes. And Elton John. It's Queen Part 2. Let's do this. Let's come on, this Elton, come on, Elon, get on the fucking bandwagon. Make it happen. If we're living in a simulation, then that should be a thing that should come into existence. And they should just call That's it Queens it. with an yeah. S. Elon thinks or a Z. Elon thinks we're living in a simulation. So if yeah. we're living in a simulation, Elon, make this happen, buddy. Yeah, you like, control it or something. I've never heard anyone even attempt to defend any Queen full-length album other than Night at the Opera, and that album sucks. It's because it's impossible, because there is no good Queen albums. There's really not. It doesn't exist. There's really not. No. This is a discography that includes things like a love song that Freddie Mercury wrote to his cat. 
complete with meowing sounds. That's real. It's called Delilah, and it's on the album Innuendo. You should listen to it, because I had to. <laughs> I didn't. <clears throat> Do you want, I did, do you want some lyrics? Do, no. do you want to hear some lyrics? Sure. I think yeah, you fuck do. It. I do. I, think I love do. lyrics. These are lyrics from the song Delilah on Innuendo. You make me so very happy when you cuddle up and go to sleep beside me. And then you make me slightly mad when you pee all over my Chippendale suite. <laughs> This dude wrote a song about a cat pissing in his hotel room. That's some Wesley Willis shit. And people think that this band is like the best band on the planet, dude. It's because people probably never got that deep. That is the truth. This band's shallow ass catalog. People never got past the hits. This is something we ended up talking about a lot too. So we should maybe dig in here a little bit. It's important to realize that good bands make good albums. Albums are not a thing where you, as a fan of music, are just supposed to accept that there are two good songs on it and the rest of it is shit. That's not how this fucking works. What if Walmart did that? Well, what if Walmart <laughs> did that with bags of chips? Every time you fucking bought a bag of chips, maybe all of them were like the bad, shitty, burned ones, except for one fucking chip in the bag, and you just didn't know what you were going to get every time you bought a bag of chips. Yeah, why? You would never fucking shop there. Why do we accept that from bands, but nothing else? Because so many people glorified this shit for so long and made it seem like you've got to be superhuman to make good music or whatever. Queen has 10 good chips in a bag and all of a sudden everyone thinks it's the greatest thing to happen to Doritos. Have you ever seen footage of the size audiences this fucking band was performing yes, for? Yes, I have actually. Dude. It's like 60,000 people. The population of a fucking country is yeah. in the crowd for this band. And if you compare them to other acts that perform for audiences that size, and let's see how this shit holds up. Michael Jackson is always the first one that comes to mind for me. When we're looking at audiences, this big of a crowd showing up to see a musical performance, I'm usually going to think of Michael Jackson. I think Metallica, but yeah. The, with sure. the helicopters over the crowd? Yeah. That's another one. Metallica's like those Russian one. shows they did, like 150,000 people or something stupid. The crowd's just getting the shit beat out of them. By yeah. fucking like 10 people died or something like that. Like, that's a freaking show. That's a metal concert. <laughs> God damn it. Thank, I mean, I'm sure it was just as crazy as at Michael Jackson. I guarantee you somebody probably died. If, if you show me pictures of crowds this big and then play me an album that I've never heard before from Queen and an album that I've never heard before from Michael Jackson and tell me to guess which music is bringing all these people out, I'm going to pick Michael Jackson a thousand percent of the time. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, no way that you... those people are showing up for a Queen album. Yeah, what did... They're not. Why did they show up? Because it sounds like fucking Nuremberg. <clears throat> how, do you how do you think Nazis got people to join their fucking team? It's fun it was to a be cult. In, it's fun to be in crowds of people who all know the same shit you know and yell about it. Maybe Queen was just a, a cult. I mean, I can tell you why anyone under 40 cares about this band. The movie Wayne's World and the oh, movie yeah. Mighty Ducks. Uh, definitely Wayne's World. I guess maybe Mighty Ducks. But the thing is, is uh, We Will Rock You has played at every basketball game in the country for, I don't even know, the entire 1990s. In Mighty Ducks, it's the it's We Are the Champions. It's but they an, did it backwards. An, well, it's an acoustic campfire sing-along thing. And so that, I'm, I don't know, it probably was on the soundtrack. I definitely didn't own the Mighty Ducks soundtrack. I definitely did not You own. did not? I did okay, not. Okay, because it sounded like you said did. N-O-T. I'm I, pretty sure I you Freudian slipped and said I you did. I definitely did not. You did. And I would not ever owned the Mighty Ducks vinyl. soundtrack. I also didn't own the Wedding Singer soundtrack or the Space Jam soundtrack on CD. Wow, yeah, those were very popular. I didn't own either of those. Uh, did you own the Wayne's World soundtrack? Because I did. You did? Oh, yeah, hell yeah, for sure. Mm. Was that one of those soundtracks where they included clips of the movie in with no. the music? Oh, man, those no. are the best I don't think so. I don't know. I haven't listened to it in forever, but I don't think so. Dumbass comedy movie soundtracks always do that. That scene in the car launched... Oh, God. Queen back into the zeitgeist, the American zeitgeist, so hard. It's practically impossible to separate those songs from these movies. 100%. You cannot really hear Bohemian Rhapsody without thinking of Wayne's World. I mean, that's been my experience. And I'm just here to tell you that Bohemian Rhapsody fucking sucks. Was it popular at the time that it came out? Or did people think it was just weird? Well, that's the thing. I don't think people like this song for itself. They like it because Wayne's World made them think that it was cool and fun to like this song. Bohemian Rhapsody only hit number nine in America when it was released as a single. Right. After Wayne's World came out, Bohemian Rhapsody went to number two because of the fucking movie it was in. And this is incontrovertible. Yeah, I think you could almost put 
any other song in that scene because it's fun. It's like they're all friends and they're singing along. You could put any other sing-along song in there and it would do the same thing. Can we get Van Halen in that scene? You 100% easily. Can Van Halen get some respect? Easily put a Van Halen song in there and it goes straight to number two. Oh my God. Number one. I bet you Van Halen would go to number one. Put fucking Running With The Devil in that scene in Wayne's World. I promise you it goes number one. Yeah. I, I think that's just the association. and People don't separate it for some reason. Running With The Devil is such a better song. Here's the deal with Bohemian Rhapsody, and this is not going to be fun for anyone who is a fan of Queen who's listening to this podcast. So just trigger warning, I'm about to fuck this song up for you, okay? Do you remember the band Saliva? Uh-huh, sure. Click, click, boom. Boom, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That band, all right. Imagine that band while I read you the lyrics. From Bohemian Rhapsody, and you tell me if I hit anything that wouldn't make perfect sense as a song by Saliva. Okay. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies, and see I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy because I'm easy come, easy go, a little high, a little low. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. Mama just killed a man, put a gun against his head, pulled my trigger, now he's dead. Mama, life had just begun, but now I've gone and thrown it all away. Mama, ooh, didn't mean to make you cry. Okay, I think I've made my point. Click, click, boom. I gotta stop there before it gets into all operatic horse shit, because that's what this band did every time they fucking performed this song live in concerts, is they left the stage and let a tape play of all that opera shit. I think it's fair to say that Queen is responsible for new metal. or Saliva, specifically. So idiotic, lyrical, moronic bullshit. Anyone out there, if you've got the time... And the inclination, I would love for anyone who listens to this podcast that makes music to, re- to quit. Yeah, also quit. But uh, before you quit, record a cover of Bohemian Rhapsody in the style of Saliva, please. I've got to hear this because I know it would work. Somebody do that. Here's a quote from the New York Times review of Queen's Madison Square Garden show. I don't remember the year, but quote, lyrically, Queen's songs managed to be pretentious and irrelevant. Musically, for all the virtuosity, though it was cheating a bit to turn over the complex middle portion of their Bohemian Rhapsody to a taped version with empty stage and flashing lights, the songs still sound mostly pretty empty, all flash and calculation, end quote. This is a band that left the stage in the middle of their shows and let a tape play the rest of their song because not even Queen wants to listen to this whole song. On what planet would that be? Nobody on earth this day and age, would be okay with a band yeah. doing that. No You have to way. stay on the stage while the tape of your song plays, and you have to pretend like you're the one making the sound. It's like, I get it. At the time, tickets to see Queen were probably five bucks. But imagine <laughs> now, like, that was a lot of money for people, but now it'd be like a hundred and fifty dollars for five bucks. A hundred and fifty dollars or something like that to see Queen, I'm sure, what it would be now in today's money. And they walked off fucking stage. People would lose their goddamn minds, and they should. That's oh, yeah. so bad. Queen's lyrics are all bad, too, by the way. It's not just that song. We could spend this entire episode just reading lyrics back and forth to each other and laughing our dicks. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the worst offenders outside of Bohemian Rhapsody, which doesn't make any freaking sense. Here's a question. What was We Are The Champions about before it got co-opted by sporting events? Same thing with We Will Rock You. What were these songs actually about before they were played at every fucking football game? What does that mean? I assume that they were written so they could make a lot of money being played at sporting events. We need to write a song that will be played at every sporting event the rest of eternity. As much as Queen usually sounds like they're trying to give people whatever they think they want or whatever they think will be popular, these songs have always sounded like nothing more than pandering to a audience, a huge fucking audience. Maybe more people should do this. You know, like if you're in a band before you quit and uh, after you make that cover of Bohemian Rhapsody that I asked you to do. Also consider pivoting to jock jams because apparently this is a huge fucking genre and you can get like all the critics will love you. Yeah. Just make songs for sporting events. Do it. Try it. Fuck it. I mean, you suck anyways. You might as well. (laughs) Might as well just try. But here's the thing. When you look up those songs and why they were written, that's apparently exactly why they were written, to really get the audience participating in the concert. If any other band does that and people figure that out, they immediately get so upset. Oh, man, this band is a sellout. I can't believe they would do it just for the money. 
Well, Queen did exactly that. That's not art. That's daycare. How do we get all the people in the room to become engaged in something? This is fucking, you know, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. This is a, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands approach to making music. As they laugh and cash the checks over and over again. And throw parties with dwarves walking around with trays full of cocaine on top of their head. Mm, 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 mm. I hope everyone who thinks Queen is one of the best bands ever, I hope you're a huge supporter of your local cheerleading scene because both of these songs are just give me a Q, give me a U, et cetera, et cetera. Give me a Queen. I think... It's fair to say that Limp Bizkit broke more boundaries musically than Queen. I feel like that's a statement that may come across as controversial for some reason that I don't understand. Sure. Because that is a fact. Well, here's the thing. So Queen marries opera and rock and roll well, and people just lose their minds. Oh, my God. This is so original. Way after Tommy, by the way. Yeah. Oh, there are people that did it long before Queen. And yet, if you say the words Limp Bizkit, People just like, oh, fuck, that's so stupid. So, but they changed the game, literally created a genre of music. And covered George Michael. I mean, if that doesn't take brass, I don't know what does. Their entire career was launched by George Michael, and it was a great cover. Yeah. I'm just saying, I, don't, I just think it's crazy to give Queen all this credit for marrying two genres and not give Limp Bizkit credit for doing the same thing. Queen never really acknowledged their influences. They always, you know, acted like they came up with this shit, whereas Limp Bizkit, by covering George Michael, lets you know, this is the music that is important to us. This is where we're coming from. Yeah. You know, this is what speaks to us. This is the reason why we're doing this. If George Michael had never existed, we would not be giving you Limp Bizkit right now. Mm-hmm. You know, Limp Bizkit did that, mm-hmm. and Queen never did that. Yeah. I just think if you're going to give Queen credit for uh, just pompous. marrying all these things together poorly, you have to give Limp Bizkit credit for literally creating an entire new genre. Another one bites the dust is such a stupid song, which should be obvious to everyone at this point, but it's also a complete ripoff of Good Times by Chic. Mm -hmm. which, you know, most songs are. There are probably 5,000 songs that are a ripoff of Good Times by Chic. But to be extra clear here, Queen's bass player, John Deacon, visited Chic in the recording studio while they were working on the album that Good Times is on. That's pretty fucking shitty. This is not only a band that doesn't draw attention to their influences. This is a band who goes and (laughs) hangs out with their friends and steals their fucking work. Hey, hey Tyler, can you... Can you show me how you play that bass line? I, I've yeah. never seen anybody play bass like that. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but okay, cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. Oh, hey, guys, I wrote this bass riff. We talk about this sometimes with bands. There are certain bands who will stumble onto some studio trick and then overuse it to death. You know, they think they found something. Um, when we talk about Fleetwood Mac, we talk about the way that uh, Buckingham's vocals are always treated the exact same way to try to make it sound, you know, different than his horrific voice. Queen had a lot of studio tricks like this. I remember reading one thing. There's a guitar solo that Brian May wanted his guitar to sound like a saxophone on, and he recorded an entire guitar solo one note at a time. That's some serial killer shit right there. That's a sociopath. Yeah, if you've never run. If you've never listened to things being comped together, it is the most fucking nerve-wracking, mindless, insane thing. So the fact that somebody put together an entire solo, you only do that if you have no emotional compass no nothing you don't experience you have no feeling you have to be numb it makes my skin crawl to think about it people numb like that are serial killers someone please check out brian may's basement no no well maybe what they need to do is go oh, this back. is also that fucking nerd who's got a phd in astrophysics by the way which fucking also nerds the smarter people are oftentimes they do crazy often shit. serial killers they are often, often serial yes, killers sure and maybe someone needs to do some research overlay the murders with the queen tour people oh, if people yeah. went missing what a good cover yeah what a, i'm, a, I'm, a I'm on the road i don't I'm have time road. i don't yeah. have time to kill people yeah come on often i was warming up here's the thing that i think would be easiest for any average listener to notice about these studio tricks if you pay attention to how often freddie mercury's vocal parts are recorded one line at a time this really stands out once you start to pay attention to it You can hear how his voice will start singing the next line before his voice is done with the line that he's on. And it's because they just recorded this shit one at a time. You just stand there and you comp together the entire fucking song that way. And it's probably meant, they probably do this because it's supposed to sound like this rapid fire thing. There's always a line coming at you, you know? Like he never has to stop for breath to give you time to think about how fucking stupid the things he's singing about are. This is also why they stop playing the song halfway through and it CD plays. 
Because how do yeah, you, how you can't, do you do can't it. recreate it? You can't it fucking do it. Because you didn't actually sing it. And by the way, this isn't something like, well, that's still cool because I got in the studio and they did a bunch of shit that no one else could ever do. Please go talk to anyone who has access to recording technology. Anyone can do anything. Major studio technology. By the way, the, the only reason that this band got to make their first album is because some idiots had just built a new studio and they picked this band to be the one to go in there and test everything out. That's the only reason that Queen got to, started making fucking albums. And if you listen to that first album, it sounds like that's what was happening. It sounds like fucking weird demos made by people who have <laughs> way too much time on their hands. Because it literally is weird demos with people that had too much time on their hands. Did you know that the Sex Pistols are kind of Queen's fault? No. Because Queen was scheduled to go on some TV show, and then Freddie Mercury had to go to the dentist for the first time in like 15 years. Not making that up. I'm not being mean about his fucked up mouth situation. It's unfortunate that he had a fucked up mouth situation. I'm not making fun of his fucked up mouth situation. Mm -hmm. It's just a fucked up mouth situation. Mm -hmm. But he had to go to the dentist for his fucked up mouth situation. And then the record label had to send a band to do this TV appearance, and they had just signed the Sex Pistols. So this is the Sex Pistols' first fucking, you know, huge TV exposure you know they all the controversy that comes out of it people smashing their tvs and everything the sex pistols are queen's fault yeah thanks freddie yeah thanks appreciate dude. it you guys really did great great work thank you thank you for doing everything you did here's something that i've always been confused by uh people always say that the song fat bottom girls is sexist and misogynist and i don't get it because all the song is about is about fucking ugly girls with fat asses just because you're bored and oh, oh, that's why. <laughs> I do get it. It's all making sense now. Yeah. It's kind of coming together now that you actually looked at the lyrics. Mm, mm. I wonder if a song like Fat Bottom Girls would, uh, if it was made in 2018, how people would respond to it. Are you serious? <laughs> do you wonder that? I don't think I you're wonder. serious. I don't think I you're serious. I bet you do. Somebody cover it. Somebody make a cover of it and see how it does. A lot of cover requests. Can we all just get back to listening to Van Halen? I mean, seriously, if you take one thing away from this episode, I really want it to be Van Halen was good. Not Van Hagar. Fuck Van Hagar. Van Halen. Van Halen good. was good. I agree, yeah. I mean, you're definitely going to listen to the album 1984. Oh, my God. Jump. Killer song. Dude, if you want to talk about a sing-along song. Might as well talk about a sing-along song. If you are willing to sing along to the shit song Bohemian Rhapsody, you really should listen to Jump because it's a super sing-along song. What about Panama? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Is there a better song? But by the well, way, this is something that always comes up. People telling us like you sh you have to do cocaine to get Fleetwood Mac. You have to do cocaine to get Steely Dan. Right. Uh, have you ever blown rails and listened to Panama by Van Halen? I also just think if you enjoy having fun, I don't know, enjoy living a positive, fun life, you listen to these songs. It's a great song. The great sing along songs are positive songs. You want to live. You want to have a great time. You want to party. Ain't talking about love. Yeah. The fucking guitar riff in that is legendary. Nobody listens to fucking Fat Bottom Girls and goes, I can't wait to blow this rail. That's because if your favorite band is Queen, your favorite band sucks. You're welcome for another 100% correct episode of Your Favorite Band Sucks. If you've never given the show a review or a rating wherever you listen to your podcast, go ahead and do that. Say whatever you want. We don't give a fuck. If this is your first time listening, you probably can't even understand how genius what you just heard was unless you go listen to more episodes. We've built up a decent back catalog at this point. Always be sharing your favorite episodes with your friends on social media. Drop a link in a group chat, you know, however you're talking to people. Just let them know about it. Mark never has anything to plug on this show, but I'm always doing all sorts of stuff. And a few weeks ago, I did something that fans of your favorite band Sucks may actually enjoy. If that's a thing, I don't know. Uh, some friends of mine using that word pretty loosely here. Some friends here in Nashville. Well, they have a podcast, too. It's called Food Court. There are multiple shows with that name, so you're looking for the artwork with the fortune cookie and the movie ticket because the idea of Food Court is they go to a mall food court or something like that and have some pretty subpar food, probably. Talk about what movie they're going to go see. Go see a movie in the theater. Then talk about the movie. Genius, right? Well, they had me on there as a guest. We watched the reboot of Predator, and, you know, I had so many things to say about it. 
If you're bored, you can go check that out. And if you're British and you're all pissed off at me about this Queen episode, just wait until next week because we're doing Elvis Costello, who sucks a lot.